let's talk about the hicks medical board uh, some of the names over here look familiar i i can remember uh, some of blue i can remember Gordon. i can remember I mean, some of and some of the faces to look very familiar. So I guess I'm home. I mean, I'm home in the midst of my my brothers. So to start with, uh, I'm Prince Adwame. I completed uh, Saint James. I think in two uh, in two thousand and nine, and I completed medical school in K University in twenty sixteen. So it's been a while since I completed school. It's been six years now, and I qualify. I mean, over here they refer to me as an old IMG. That is an old international medical graduate. Currently, I'm in PGY one. That's postgraduate year one in Ghana. You say first year residency at the Bridgeport Hospital, Yale New Haven uh, Health System Department of Med 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 Medicine. So it's a pr 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 privilege to have this opportunity to talk to you about my journey so far. Uh, so the USML is the United States Medical Licensing Exam, which is organized by ECFMG. That is the Educational Commission for Federal Medical Graduates. And the aim is to, uh, I mean, create an objective, standardized approach in order to certify foreign trained medical doctors in order to practice, not really practice, but to train as uh, specialists in the United States. I mean, over here, unlike back at home or the British system, after medical school, you can't practice. So your degree that you gain from medical school by here is only to qualify you to start training in a residency program to a more specialized, I mean, field, unlike Ghana where you can practice as a medical officer for some time. So over here, uh, the certification is very standardized. So it means it's, a, it's the same exam that the Americans write, the same exam that anybody writes from elsewhere. So the idea is that you should be up to their standard before you can qualify to practice here. So if you're able to pass the exam, it means, I mean, you, you you are at the US I mean, level. So the exam, uh, we have the step one, we have the step two CK. At first, there used to be a step two CS. CK is clinical knowledge. At first, they used to have the CS, which has been canceled. And now they have, so instead of that, there's an English proficiency test and then a pathway in order to get certified before you can write step three. So uh, to start with, step one is, about the basic science. So in Ghana, usually, or elsewhere, anywhere where you attended medical school, that lasted for six years. The basic science are the things we do in the first three years. That is the anatomy, physiology, biochemistry, uh, pharmacology. Those are the basic sciences which we take, which we take for step one. And unlike back at home, uh, their, their, their basic science is very clinically oriented. So everything they teach you, the, the, the aim is not just for you to memorize it. I mean, I mean, we know most of us, we, we have very good memories. We are able to memorize stuff. The aim of the educational system is that anything they teach you in basic science should be something that should be applicable to you in the clinical years. So for us in Ghana, if you, if you complete third year and you do all the basic sciences and you come to write the USM list at one, uh, it's possible, but the probability of you passing is very low because we don't, for us, when we are being taught, they don't usually link it like that. And most of the people who teach us are not doctors, so they, they are not able to uh, be link it. So usually you get to link it, you, you get to learn how to link those basic stuff, basic science things when you finish, I mean, clinical, that is when after you can do it. So personally, I wouldn't really advise anybody to take step one immediately after third year, even though some people say at that time, I mean, the stuff will be fresh in your mind and all that. But it's not just the raw basic science we are taught back at school. You are supposed to apply it to clinical concepts. Yeah. And so step one, basically, uh, I think depending on your basis, how long you take to prepare will depend on your basis. When I talk about your basis, how you were taught in your medical school, how you were able to graph the, con the, the concepts and then how you want to go about with it. Personally, I used, I did intensive study for about 12 months. That's about one year. Yeah, and then um, the materials you want to use, you have to use to depend on your basis. I mean, whether you think you are good in the area or not. Uh, first aid is like the Bible of the US Emily Step 1. You can't do without it. But the approach of first aid, first aid's approach is like, is, is like it's just like a revision sort of thing. It's like, um, you know the thing already, and they are just trying to direct you to how the US system is. That's how first aid is. 
And a lot of people, especially the Indians, they like to use Kaplan. Kaplan assumes that you don't know anything and they start to teach you from scratch. But because of that, it's very voluminous. And usually most people from Ghana don't use Kaplan. Most of us, we use step one. Sorry, we use the first aid, the USMLE first aid. And apart from that, there are also certain things you can't do without. Uh, most of the exam, about 65 to 75% is pathology oriented. So there is this video called uh, uh, Patuma. And then the Gojian, they are all very good, but most of the Indians like using Gojian and most Ghanaians have, have taught to use Patuma. So Patuma will teach you all the basic concepts that you need to know. And there's also another video called Bots and Beyond, which is very good. Bots and Beyond teaches everything from like everything you need to know about the step one. So basically, uh, for me, one of my weak neck, like one of my weak areas was uh, biostatistics and then biochem. I mean, in school, we don't take public health very seriously. But over here, they take it very seriously. So I used uh, Boss and Beyond to supplement my biochemistry and then my biostat. And also with microbiology, I mean, in school, I was taught microbiology very well, but it was mainly based on the setting. There were certain conditions which, I mean, nobody sees them in Ghana, so nobody really pays much attention to them. Something like uh, anaplasma, something like histoplasmosis, something like helicosis, something like Rocky Mountain spotted fever. You will never see anything like that in Ghana, so nobody is really going to teach you that. I mean, even if they will teach you to be something very brief. So, I mean, when you study st stuff like that, since you've never heard of that before, it's very difficult. So, Boss and Beyond, and there's another video to call Sketchy. We have Sketchy Micro, we have Sketchy Farm. Sketchy Micro is very good if you think you have some weakness in step one. So, the, the, basically, the most difficult part of the exam is step one. I mean, because it's been a while since we, 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 we were taught, I mean, the basics in school, and also due to how they are taught, how they are able to apply straight away to their clinical setting, which most of us, in most of our schools in my school, is only the lecturers who are medical doctors who are able to do that. Most of the PhD holders back at home are people who didn't go to medical school. They did, let's say, biological science, they did biochemistry, and they came to teach. So they know what they are doing, but they don't, it's not their fault. They don't know how to link it to medicine. So they just teach it. I mean, theoretically, with no links to medicine. So, I mean, it makes it makes it a little bit difficult. So, as I said, depending on how long and how your business is, you can take about 12 months. And step one is very important. At first, they used to grade it by a three digit score system. And so, but the pass mark was 198. But in order to, I mean, to be assured of matching, at least uh, you should be targeting about 230 plus. So, I mean, that was it. But now, I don't know whether it's a good thing or a bad thing. Now, step one is pass or fail. It is not recorded. They don't record three the discourse again. So, it's, it's just a pass. And you need 198 over 300, which I believe all of us here, if you're able to study for it, we should be 198 shouldn't be a problem. But, I mean, even though it's now a pass or fail, it has its disadvantages to which we will talk about. But when you are studying for it, you don't have to be complacent because now the emphasis will be on step two. And your step two score will depend on how you understand and how you grasp the concepts in step one. That's your basic science. Because over here, everything is about understanding. If you don't understand the concepts, you won't be able to get a good score. So that is it for step one. Then I'll move to step two. Step two is the clinical knowledge. So it's basically the things we learn in Ghana from fourth to CCA. That is the internal medicine, surgery, uh, child health or pediatrics, obstetrics and gynecology, ophthalmology, and those things. For step two, uh, most Ghanaians that I know who write step two do very well because, I mean, most of us practice after school before we sit for the US service. Most of us will have done house job. And so we, we would have had hands-on experience with seeing patients. Our clinical skills are good. Our clinical knowledge are good. It's not just bookish. I mean, we've, we've, we've seen it and we've done it all. So, I mean, step two, I mean, if only your basics are very good, step two shouldn't really be a problem for you. And if, I mean, whether you train outside or whether you train in Ghana and you've done house job, whether if you train it outside and you're able to pass the MDC exam and you study very hard for it, I mean, step two shouldn't really be a problem. Step two, depending on whether you are working or not, step two, I mean, maximum, you can be able to use about nine months to write, about nine months to, I mean, to clear step two. And step two, you don't need a lot of materials, unlike step one. Step two, you world alone. And I forgot, step one to you, you need a question bank called you world in order to help you to be able to see that 
you really understood the things that you are studying. You can't do without you at Bank. And step two is do the same thing. But step two, the good thing about step two is step two over here, over here, everything they do is evidence-based. I mean, from their medicine, everything they do is evidence-based. You can't, you can't do anything without having the evidence. And step two is the same thing. It's so evidence-based that people, and I subscribe to that, people don't recommend using test books for step two. And I did it and it really helped. You don't have to read any textbook. All you need to do is just to solve your world step two questions. And the, and the idea behind this is, is, is that medicine is very fluid. I mean, new things keep, keep on, I mean, coming due to research and stuff like that. So it's possible that something that, that is written in a textbook six months or one year or two years ago is now outdated. If you go and use the same knowledge in the exam, even though you read it in the textbook, you get it wrong because things would have changed. I mean, for 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 example, something like uh, C difficile, uh, Clostridium difficile area for, uh, for 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 there, there, there was a time. I mean, you could use metronidazole, metronidazole to treat. I mean, as first line, fine. In Ghana, we still you 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 you, you use it, but over here now they don't use it again. If you use a textbook, you might still see metronidazole in it. You will update the information almost every day. You all update information every day. So there are times you even solve a question, you get it right. And in about a week or two, you all will discontinue the question. And then they will give something like a, 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 a disclaimer and direct that now. I mean, things are not done this way, things are done this way. So for step two, I mean, all you need is just to do you all. Fine, there are, there are books which you can use if you think your basics is not that good. There's what you call master the ports. There's also a first date for the USML step two. And then there is this video uh, called Online Med Ed. I mean, I I used it, but I don't think it's very necessary if your basics are good. And there is also a uh, boss and beyond for step two, which I mean, some people use. Well, as for that one too, I mean, I think about depending on how your basics are and depending on how you trust yourself, depending on how you think you can grasp concepts very fast. I think about nine months should be okay. I mean, for, for you. Then after that, at first, there used to be CS, but now there's no longer step two CS because of the COVID and stuff like that. They canceled it. And so now uh, what you need to do is to prove to them that you are proficient in English. So there is this exam called the OET. It's called the Occupational English Test, which you need to write to be, I mean, in order to certify, the, in order to provide evidence that you are proficient in English. Then after that, you need to go to uh, medical and dental council. If you have done house job, you need to uh, medical and dental council has to give you what they call a letter of good standing to let them know that you've been practicing in Ghana for a while and your clinical skills are good. Then after that, uh, you can apply to uh, ECFMG for certification. So after writing step one, step two, and then writing the OET, you qualify to apply for residency. So you don't need step three. Technically, you don't you don't need step three to apply for residency, but you need to finish step three before you complete the residency program. And if you have step three before applying to, it's an advantage. It increases your chances of matching. But technically, you you don't need it because I haven't written it yet, but I'm able to match. And step three is almost just like step two, just that step three tests your ability to practice independently. So step three, I mean, a lot of people use about two, three months to write step three, especially if you decide to write it immediately after step two, since it's almost the same knowledge base. Unfortunately, you can't sit for step three in Ghana. I mean, the center is only in the US, it's only in the US that you can study for step three. But you can sit, sit for step one, step two, and the OET in Ghana. Uh, there's a place in Accra most called Total House. I mean, it's near, uh, mo 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 moving people tell. I mean, total house, they have a center there where, I mean, you can sit for both step one, step two, and the OET. So, and then let me, and then uh, let me come to some specifics, which I didn't talk about. I'll talk for about five to 10 minutes, and after that, I'll open the floor for you to ask uh, questions. I mean, the USML is very time consuming. It's very time, and then, I mean, money consuming, to be honest with you, uh, especially for us, who work and then have to study at the same time. You need to sacrifice a lot. I mean, if you really want to do it, you need to sacrifice a lot. You need to study a lot. Personally, I was studying like about four hours a day. I mean, about four to six hours a day. And then I, I never did, I never did look to throw out my, the two, two years that I used to prepare. I didn't do look I never did look because 
always when I was on leave, I used my all my leave time to prepare for it. And the time my friends were doing Lukum, I was using the Lukum time to study because the truth is you can't you can't combine it, especially for step one. The concepts are very volatile. I mean, if you study and then you you leave a gap for about a week or two without studying, you come back and you re re realize that you've forgotten almost everything you've studied because it's very volatile. I mean, they are very, they are basic abstract concepts which you have to keep on reading over, 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 and over again. So if you really want to do this and then you, I mean, you've decided that this is what you want to do, you will need to sacrifice some things, which includes making sure that you are giving all your time for it. Yes, and then uh, it's also uh, some something that I mean is worth mentioning too is the financial costs. I mean, financially, it's, it's it's very demanding. I wanted to share the screen, but look, I still I'm not able to share it. But then it's fine. But then, uh, for example, when you start, you need to do apply for. Hello. Yeah, I mean, for the cost, for instance. Uh, Okay, that's fine. Don't worry, like I'll read from here. For example, uh, the fee for application is about 160 US dollars. And then step one and step two cost about 965, let's say about $1,000 each for step one, you pay about $1,000. And then there's something they call the international surcharge fee. So if you are not in the US and you are writing outside the US, you pay what we call the international surcharge fee. It's about $200. So let's say step one alone, the exam alone will cost you about $1,200. And you need to buy UWorld at least a year's subscription, which will cost you about, let's say, about $500 or let's say, about $400 a year. And then, I mean, depending depend on your medical school, before you can be eligible to sit for the exam, your medical school will need to do certain things for you. They will need to prove that indeed you completed school there. So, I mean, you have to send certain documents for them to forward to ECFM and all that. So, uh, rounding it up, I'll say step one and step two, the costs, I mean, will be, let's say, around $1,800 to $2,000 for each step. Yeah, but then, I mean, if you look at it, if you look at the end game and what you want to achieve, I mean, there's a lot of money back in Ghana, especially looking at the amount we earn and all that. That's why I said, I mean, you need to sacrifice both time and financially. Because if you come here, I mean, like you, you make that money in less than in about two weeks. I mean, like you can make that money in about two weeks. And after school, like you make about 10, I mean, 10 times that, I mean, over a short period of time so i mean it requires a lot of sacrifice it requires a lot of sacrifice and you need to believe in yourself that you can do it and i mean significantly you can also take the word factor out i mean this is, is something that all of us we will need so i mean this is about the exam and for after that after step one and step two and then writing the oet getting certified by ucfmg then there's a time for you to apply for residency uh, so you have to buy the ERAS token, be certified by ECFM. The other ones you have to pay about a thousand. And after that, you need to, I mean, apply, apply to schools. So that one, the the average international medical graduates will apply to about a hundred programs. I mean, I did about hundred and twenty-two because I wanted to air on the side of question. And the application alone. Cost, cost me about 3,000 US dollars. So plus the AC famous certification, you are thinking about 4,000 over there. And I got I, I got six interviews. I mean, which is good. And ideally, like, technically, you need just one interview to match. Just that the more interviews you get, the better your chances of matching. I mean, most people who get about seven interviews and above, I mean, are able to match. So, I mean, after they, and if they call you for an interview, it means they like you. If they don't like you, they wouldn't, they wouldn't even bother to, 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 to call you for an interview at all. So, if they call that's, you that's a, a quick thing. So, uh, uh, the meeting will end uh, in like 10 minutes because it's a free version of the Zoom. Oh, okay. So, I want you to finish this first 40 minutes. So, you finish uh, this first part. Then we will join back in again so we can get another 40 minutes. Okay, sure. So in about eight minutes, we can leave and join again with the same link. Okay. So that the second part will be for question and answers. Okay. okay. All right. Good.
Yeah, so I mean, after like when, when I mean, and with the application, you need uh, letters of recommendation from, I mean, either from your lecturers or people you have worked under. You will need to write a personal statement. I mean, you need your transcript from your medical school. You will need what we call over here, they call it the dean's letter, but back at home, we call it the MSP, that's the medical student performance evaluation where your dean will write something good about you i mean all that when you apply to a medical school they will give it to you and then then comes the interview so the interview i mean you need a lot of coaching and then i don't know i know like a lot of people of you might be on that page there is a page called the gpsf it's the Ghana Physicians and Surgeons Foundation of North America. I mean, almost a lot of the physicians and then the, the surgeons here. So it's something like the Ghana Medical Association of North America. I mean, they are on it and it, it, they are very vibrant. They want a lot of guys to join. And so they are very good when it comes to mentoring, giving you study materials, teaching you how to approach interview, teaching you how to write your letters of recommendation. So as many of you who are really interested can join that page, GPSF, I, I, I think a few of you might be like on it, so you can share the link on your page. They can be able to mentor you and guide you how to go about the process. So for now, I mean, I think basically that's it. I don't know, but if I if I omitted anything, I mean, when it comes to the question, uh, the question session, you guys can prompt me so that yeah, I'll be able to uh, answer uh, the questions for you. So I think I'll end here. Yeah, Prince, I'll, I'll end here. Thank you. Okay, then we can. We have five more minutes to uh, to come back for the second round. So I think we can start with the questions and answers. So if anyone has any question, um, you can ask now. Prince, you didn't talk about the OET match. How did you prepare for that? Oh, okay. So, so are you talking about the uh, the English test? Yes. Okay. So, I mean, for us, I mean, it, it technically, it doesn't make sense why they need to, like, we need to prove that we can speak English. Like, all of us, we can speak English. We are very proficient in English and all that. OET is not a difficult English problem as compared to IELTS and then TEFL. And then the reason is that it is occupational based. So they are not really testing your, your English per se, but they are testing your English with regards to your profession. They are testing your English with regards to your profession. So, for example, the speaking, I mean, you you will be made, you 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 will be given a, a scenario. It can be, let's say, uh, that you are educating a patient about uh, his, like a mother about his child's sickle cell condition. So they will give you, like, they will give you a, a, a transcript about what to tell the patient. So it's like it's just like you being in the consulting room. Just speak for us to see how you can talk to patients, and then they test your English. And then the the written part two, they will give you. Let's say most of the time is a referral letter. So they will just give you a scenario about the patient you've seen at the inpatient, and then you are discharging. So they will tell you to write a referral letter or as a summary to his or her primary care provider. And then they will give you all the patient's details. Let's say when the patient was in the hospital, all the details, his diagnosis, his condition, his past medical history, his history. And so all you are going to do is just to summarize and then write a letter. So it's not really testing your English per se, but testing your ability to apply your English to your profession. And I mean, it's not really, it's not difficult because I mean, all of us who would be, we passed, it's, it's, it's not something difficult. We are used about a month to prepare and even it wasn't intensive study. Like I was just like maybe, maybe in a week, I was just, I mean, learning, let's say four, five days a week. And I was learning about an hour a day. I was just watching the videos. And then, I mean, materials are available. There are materials on YouTube you can use. Kaplan has a book on it, and the OET people to have a book on it. So that one you can you can write it in a car to that house. The cost is about three thousand Ghana cities for an exam. And you and even if you fail, you can rest it as many times as as possible. So I think in this journey, OET is the list of your fears. It's something you don't even have to think about. So 
I mean, it's a list of your fears. It's something you don't have to think about at all. That's why they didn't really say much about it. And for us, I mean, especially if you have been able to complete medical school with English as your first language for six years, OET shouldn't be a problem for you at all. Uh, okay, so basically you wrote all your exams in Ghana, right? Yes, yes, good. Let me talk about that. Basically, I wrote all my exams in Ghana. And I mean, there's an advantage to it because, for example, I mean, the disadvantage is that you might, you have to find time to be able to balance your work with your study, which I think you should be able to do. For example, if you go to work, let's say at eight and you close at, let's say around four or five, I mean, you can rest and study, let's say from eight to 12 or from nine to 12 every day. And I don't think that will be bad. And as, especially for step two, working and studying for it at the same time is very beneficial because, I mean, you are seeing the patients on the ward, you are working, and then you are applying, I mean, the knowledge that we are getting from the hospital into it. it's, 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 it's step two. Basically, there is no advantage, I mean, of being in the, like, leaving Ghana to come to the U.S. to come and prepare for the exam. I mean, the only advantage is, let's say, uh, after step one, step two, when you are here, you can write step three. And then you can also get what you call U.S. clinical experience. If you have U.S. clinical experience, it's very beneficial. I mean, it helps you in your application. So basically, I think that's the only advantage of being in the U.S. and writing, I mean, the steps. Other than that, it doesn't have any other advantage. I did it in Ghana. I never stepped foot in the U.S. I wrote step one here. I wrote step two here. I wrote OET here. So uh, technically, I mean, I wouldn't, but if you have for, 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 for family here and you want to come, that's good. But I mean, because over here, you have to pay bills and then you have to work a lot. Over here, everything is about bills. So, I mean, depending, if you think, if you come here and then you can be able to get enough time to study, that's fine. And another thing about it is, to, 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 is that there's, there's, there's what they call red flags during the interview. So one red flag is, extended periods of medical inactivity, extended periods of medical inactivity. For example, if you, you came to the US to use about two, three years to practice, to study, to write the US MLA, and then you go for the interview, and then on your CV, they find out that for the past three years, you haven't practiced any medicine. They want to find out from you why, and you need to give them I mean, a good reason why. And then it wouldn't suffice. They wouldn't take that explanation that you were using that time to prepare for the U.S. Uh, no. The meeting will end in less than a minute. A minute, oh, please. Oh, okay. Give so, the same link to join back in again. So we get extra 40 minutes. Oh, okay. 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 So, I mean, because over here, they use about three months to prepare for it. So if you tell them that the past two, 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 two years you were preparing for it, that's why you were not working it wouldn't suffice and then when they see that you are working for it like you you you, 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 you you've been working even during the time you were preparing for the exam it tells them that your skills are good and you are still abreast with medicine so that's another advantage of staying in ghana and preparing i mean that's one of the advantages but what you want to do depends on you but personally i did it here initially i mean i talked about a few things so i mean i've talked about how difficult it is and then how you need to sacrifice a lot for it. So let me also conclude by adding the motivations. I mean, like the motivations why you want to do this. I mean, uh, depending on career progression, I mean, even though this is difficult, this is the best. PLAB is a little bit easier. I mean, PLAB is a little bit easier because it's similar to the things we study back at school. But what I didn't like about PLAB is after PLAB and PLAB, after passing PLAB, you need to go and be a medical officer in the US. And, I mean, talking to some of my friends there, it's possible you might never specialize. It's possible. There have been people in the, US, in, in, the, in the UK who have been medical officers till they graduated. I'm talking about people who are coming from outside the UK. But over here, everything is specialized. Immediately you pass the USMLA, you are starting residency after, after three years. If you do internal medicine, you'll be an uh, internist. If you did, Pediatrics should be a pediatrician. And if you want to do fellowship over here too, you can immediately start after that. And uh, I mean, your stipend as a resident, I mean, isn't that much compared to how doctors in here. But back at home, there's a huge money. 
like it's like it's huge because averagely residents here take about i mean over here it's not that much but over here like but in the back home i mean it's huge because uh i mean residents here take an average of let's say about sixty thousand a year over here like it's not i mean it's such a huge amount of money but then back home i mean it's 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 huge i mean that's one of the motivations too and as i said career progression and after school you are going to make about three or four times that depending on whether we decide not to do fellowship again or you decide to do fellowship so i mean that's 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 one motivation and another motivation too is uh, sometimes we, you just need to pass and then you need connections to, I mean, who you know works everywhere, not just in Ghana. And that's where the GPSF people can help you a lot. I mean, there are Ghanaians in a lot of programs and depending on the, the performance of the Ghanaians there, most programs will, will want more Ghanaians. For example, the program where I am is I mean it is used to having Ghanaian doctors and there are even Ghanaian faculties on the board here. So sometimes if you get a good score, all you need for an interview is for somebody in the program who has proven himself to just go to the program director and then put in a good word for you. That's all. So for example, now that I'm here, I mean first year, I mean now, I mean I've done just two weeks, but let's say after a year or two, I mean I gave a good account of myself and I mean my my program director didn't regret, I mean, accepting me into his program and I did very, very, very well. All that I need to do is just to go to the program director and just recommend, let's say a friend or somebody I know back in Ghana. So after we recommend you, all that I'm doing is that, hey, just, just, just take a look at this guy's application. I mean, they take a look, look at your application. They think you are good. They, they give you an interview and then they take you. It happens a lot. So well, I mean, now all that you need to do is just concentrate past the one and step two. And, and then another thing I, I, I forgot to add to is that, uh, I mean, people, if, if you have an MPH here, it's an advantage, but you don't need it too much, but it's an advantage. I mean, if you are in a hospital where, I mean, you have the opportunity to be involved in research and then it wouldn't take much of your time, that one too is an advantage because if you have published work, it's an advantage, but you don't need it too much. But if you have it, that's an added advantage. So uh, basically, I think I'll end here and then, I mean, open the floor for uh, questions. Thank you. Okay, so please, any question? If you need more clarification on something or something that you've heard about this US journey journey and you are not sure, let's let. Yeah, Prince. Hello, Prince. Yeah, you can you can ask you can you can you can ask your question. I can hear you. All right, good. Thank you very much uh, for your time. Uh, if I heard you right, uh, you made mention of uh, getting some documents from NDC. Yeah. Uh, yes, I that um, you you must complete or finish your your housemanship before you can you know get matched into US. You know make a uh, school, I mean, like a residency that's in the that's US, or that's a good question. Or once once you finish your medical school and pass the point two, you can still get get enrolled into into the program. Why answer this, or like you wait for other questions? Yeah, I think you should answer from there. I think about what you have a question. So if you have a question, you can raise your hand just as Clement has done so. So do I answer this or ask yeah, another question? Yeah, just answer that. With me. Okay, so technically, technically, you don't need to do house job to start residency here because I mean the medical students here they don't do any house job immediately after medical school they just transition straight to medical school. So, uh, but the reason why you need medical dental and dental counselor at first they used to have the step two CS. So the step two CS is clinical skills. So that's when you prove to them that apart from you being proficient in medical knowledge your skills is also good but cs was cancelled which is somehow advantageous to us because your cost goes down and then the, the time you need to prepare and money to goes down but now because clinical skills has been cancelled you need to prove to them that you are your skills is proficient you are the, i mean you are at, your level is at par with them so that's when 
So now, because of that, they have what we call pathways. And one of the pathways is through MDC. So one of the pathways is that you need to prove to them that you have been licensed in your home country to be able to practice permanently on your own without supervision. That's that's when MDC that's when MDC comes in. That's when MDC. So MDC has to give you a letter of good standing, and you only get that letter of good standing after getting a permanent certificate. That is completing house job. But I mean, there've been people who didn't do house job and they were able to match. So that one today, there is another pathway for that. If you are in the US, let's say immediately after medical Sweden state will do house job and then you came over here, you need to shadow somebody. You need to shadow under somebody who is licensed to practice here. So let's say a specialist over here. And then you shadow the person, you gain clinical experience from the person, and then the person uh, assesses you and then let's say write something like a letter or fill some forms and send to ECFMG that. He has worked with you and then he thinks your skills are good enough to start residency. So basically, which I think, I mean, it's not very feasible for those of us who are back at home. So for those of us who are back at home like me, who don't plan on coming to the US, I mean, passing through MDC is the best route for you. But technically, you don't need to finish house job in order to be able to apply for residency after passing your steps. I don't know whether I was able to answer your question. That's right. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So next is Philemon and then Ruth. But just uh, Philemon, before you come in, what Prince was saying. So if you don't get the recommendation from MDC, like if you're a fresh graduate and you never practice in Ghana, the second pathway is the mini clinic. You need three doctors to put in that you are good clinically. Okay. You need three doctors who have about five years of experience practicing in US. So as Prince said, if you are practicing in Ghana now and MDC come in to confirm that this person can practice without supervision, it's a very big thing. Otherwise, you need to come here and look for doctors. Some of them, they charge you before they do that for you. Or um, it's hard to get doctors to do that for you here. So I think if you're in Ghana, try to get to the stage that you don't need to go through the, med uh, the clinical, the mini clinic pathway. So up here. <laughs> Yeah. Hello. Yeah. Yeah. You can ask. You can ask your question. Okay. My question is that um, is it time bound? As in, is there a specific period where you have to complete the steps? As in, step one, step two. Okay. Please, you understand. Yeah. 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 I get it. So, uh, technically, if you write step one, I think step one is valid for about seven to eight years. I'm not so sure, but I think it's about seven to eight years. So, if you write step one and you pass within seven to eight years, you are supposed to finish step two. Other than that, step one, the step one will, will, will expire. Yes, and then uh, there, there is an advantage to finishing early. I mean, most programs here prefer people who've completed medical school within five years. Most programs here will prefer people who have completed medical school within five years. Usually after five years, they refer to you as an old I, old IMG. They refer to you as an old international medical graduate. I mean, I know people who have matched. For example, uh, my cousin matched this year. I matched with her. She completed medical school in 2011. So, I mean, she, she, she had been, she had completed medical school for like the past 11 years, but she was in residency in Ghana. So that was an advantage. So she was in residency in Ghana, so it's like she had uh, advanced medical qualifications. But technically, I mean, no matter what, I mean, you can match. Most of the time, it depends on your score. If your scores are good, most most programs don't really care about how long you stayed in the house. But some programs, too, because you know they had because the because the volume of applications they get is a lot. Most programs get about five thousand applications a year, and the maximum. I mean, usually they admit in the years like 40, 50. Some programs even admit just eight. My program, we were just 22. So imagine if somebody is getting 5,000 applications and then he needs to just admit 22. It's humanly impossible for the person to go through all those 5,000 applications. So, that, so sometimes they use what we call filters in order to filter the application. So the filters can be the number of years you've stayed in the house after medical school. So some programs can set their filters as two years, three years, five years so if let's say a program filter is set at five years no matter the number of the score you get who you school above five years are they won't even read your application they will just throw it into the junk 
some programs also use some programs to their filters are their scores so some program will tell you specifically that we prefer people with step one scores of 230 plus or we prefer people with step two scores of 240 plus so when they set that filter if your score is below 240 they won't even look at your application they will just throw it into the junk unless you have somebody who's going behind the scenes to tell them that I'll even do this person is more than five years old his course is very good they can take time to so i mean you don't really need i mean apart from the eight years by which the step one was score i mean technically you can match the not notwithstanding the number of years you completed after school but ideally if you're able to do it within five years it is to your advantage i did it in a about five years because I was exactly on my feet here. If you're able to do it within five years, it's to your advantage. And I know people who've done it, I mean, in two, three years. It all depends on your level of concentration and your level of uh, commitment. Because ideally, for step one, step two, and wait, you can use two years to finish everything. Yeah. I don't know whether I answered your question. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm fine. Okay. Yeah, you had a question. Uh, oh, but but asked the question I wanted to ask. So I'm sorry. Okay, so guys, any any other question? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, hello. Can I come? Yeah. Yeah. Um. So, uh, talking about your cousin who was in residency, um, assuming she was a specialist, oh, okay. would it have given her um any special advantage, and would it have yeah okay so you are asking whether you think if she was a, a specialist would have given him an advantage right was that your question yes yeah, yes yeah, yeah, please yes okay so usually uh most programs i mean prefer students with what they call uh, uh advanced medical qualifications it can be a master of public health it can be masters in any other program it can be being in a residency program or it can be being a, a, a specialist. It gives you an advantage. For example, if like we we are we are five applicants and we all had step one, 240, and we all had step two, 240, and somebody is a specialist, you don't expect them to I mean, to take you and then leave the person who's a, 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 a specialist. That is the advantage. I mean, but technically you 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 don't need it. But if you have those things, it is an advantage. For example, I came with somebody. Uh, she, when I was doing house job, that, that is 2016, when I was doing house job in pediatrics, she was in residency, second year. So she was my boss. Yeah, and then, but her husband was here. So, I mean, she had to come here. So after residency, she applied. So because of that, because she was a, a specialist already, all her interviews were in the top Ivy Leagues. She had an interview at Yale. She had an interview at Harvard, Brigham and Women's Hospital. She had an interview at Massachusetts General Hospital. She had an interview at another hospital, I've forgotten. Boston Children. If you are, if you know the US system, you will recognize these names that I've mentioned. They are the top, like they are the top five hospitals like in the US. Even people who completed medical school don't even get into those programs. And she chose Yale. She's now doing pediatric neurology in Yale right now. Yale is an Ivy League school. So, I mean, you can get it. But then the good thing about it is, I mean, it's, it's names and all that. But after school, you all have the same qualification, no matter where you are. I mean, and you, all, you all get the same amount of money when you are employed. So, I mean, if you have an added qualification, it helps. But, I mean, it's not a must. But if you have it, it's an advantage. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Right, any more questions? Let's ask our questions. Like we have more time. We have about. I mean, you can if if you don't want to talk to you, can type the question. You can type the question and I will read it out. You yeah, can type if, it. If, if, if you don't want to talk to you. Can. Yeah. So, Prince, my question is: How did you build your CV? Did you do any research? How did you build your CV? Aside by uh, practicing in Ghana, how did you build it? Okay. 
So uh, one of the ways in which you can build your CV, I mean, house job and then med- being a med- like being a medical officer working in Ghana is one of the easiest ways in which you can build your CV. I mean, I mean that one the all of us we have it, and that's our and that's our advantage. And uh, through the help of one of my friends in tech, I mean, he is so much into research. He's in Confanoche now, so I mean, I was able to team up with him. And I was able to get one paper published, even though I wasn't the lead author. So that was one. And then two, if you are in a hospital, and then you have the opportunity to be on a committee, don't take it lightly. I mean, those are some of the things you can use to build your CV. For example, I was I was the chairman of the quality assurance team in my hospital. So that was one of the ways in which I I I I I built my CV, and it, and it was very important for them. They were very impressed, like about it. And I was also uh, the clinical care coordinator in my hospital for the last year before I left. So that one too was part of my CV. It was very important. They were very impressed with it. And two, and then one, and then uh, another thing that they like very much too is volunteering, like. There are things in Ghana we don't see them to be a big deal, but if you put those things on your CV, it impresses them a lot. For for example, just doing community outreaches to let's say to schools, to hospitals. I mean, like to let's say like places going to talk to them about let's say diabetes. Those things will happen. There are things you you might not have done, but if you put them on your CV, there's a part for volunteering. Which is very important to them. For example, where I went, I was in the Eastern region. There was a secondary school that I volunteered. I used to go there to mentor them and to talk to them about certain issues concerning SHS. I put that in my CV, and it was very important to them. And I and I also did some few things. Uh, there was this WHO program on mental health. It was called the Mental Health Gap Action Program. I volunteered for it and I was the facilitator for my district. Like I was the one for facilitating it in my district. So I put in my CCCV that I mean, because it was WHO, so it was a very like big thing for them. And then there, there was also something, uh, it was called, uh, it was about, uh, it was uh, Ministry of Health organized program for training doctors and physicians assistance on how to manage cardiovascular disease and i was a trainer of trainers in that program so i put those things also in my ccv and they were very helpful so there are things you might not see to be very important for example in your hospital if there's any committee that you think can help let's say quality improvement committee you can join and i i mean and you can also use those things to build your CV. Yeah. Okay, so there's a question from Tim Richard. He said, Senior, is it possible to is it possible for one to pass the exam using only U word? So uh is yes and no for step two and step three. You can use U word alone and you pass, but for step one, no. Step one, you can't use U word alone. Step one, you need U word, which is a must. You need first aid, which is a must, and then Atoma, which is a must, and then depending on your strength, you can add bots and beyond. So you see, that's why step one is the most difficult part to pass. Because I mean, is the concepts are very abstract, they are very volatile. You need tons of materials for it. But step two, you can use just if your step one basis was good, you can use just your words. I mean, there are videos, but they are not a must to watch. But for step one, no. Step one, you can't use your words. Step one, you need about six or five materials to combine. But for step two, Step three, you can just use your word for it. Okay, so Prince, another question. You mentioned that sometimes they are giving some of the Ghanaians here who are in good positions to help. So at which point in the preparation can we start getting connected to people? Which point so, can someone help us? So that's why that's why from the start, I mean, if you are really bent on beginning this journey. Join GPSF, that is the Ghana Physicians and Surgeons Foundation. Friends, are you on that page? No, I'll, I'll join later. Okay. So you see, GPSF, uh, 
to be honest with you, there are a lot of Ghanaians here in very top positions. At least I know about three or four Ghanaians who are program directors. So, and usually, uh, even though, I mean, admission depends on the admission team, but the program director has a say. So, for example, there is a program in Athens, Georgia. It's called Pied More. That's where that's where Daki Watmel made his soul rest in peace. His son, that's where he did residency. The program director is a Ghanaian. Almost every year, he takes at least about three to four Ghanaians. Howard University, the program director is a Ghanaian. Every year, he takes about four or five Ghanaians, like it's a must. And there are programs where the program directors are not. Ghanaians, but they are very influential Ghanaian lecturers here. For example, in my pro -pro 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 program, there's a Ghanaian, and he's the one who uh, interviewed me. Usually, so I mean, those people, I mean, if they interview and you see, they see that you are a Ghanaian, and then you give a good account of yourself. I mean, they will, 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 they will I mean, they will admit you. And then there are times too. The reason why GPSF is very helpful is that sometimes. The person might not be in the program currently, but he trained there. And then he has, he still has some good links over there. So for example, if I train here and then I complete, and then, I mean, I, as I said, I proved myself here and I still have good links with the program director. I can always chip in. I can always send him a message that, oh, my friend back at home is applying. So take a look at his application. So right now, I mean, all you need to do is just concentrate on the exam. When the application starts, when they when you finish and then the application is that usually gpsf can sort you not that they can sort you they they usually sort you because they are very i mean they are very uh i mean like they are very intentional about it they, they will organize a lot of webinars and zoom meetings for you they will organize webinars zoom meetings about how to write your letter of recommendation how to write your personal statements how to approach your interview they will give you materials on questions to prepare for they will they, some, some of them will even volunteer to do interview sessions with you i had somebody like that i did an interview session with the person and then he was he will co -co -co correct me like when they ask you this say, 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 say this when they ask you this so right now the emphasis to, to concentrate on passing the exam when you pass the exam there are a lot of people and systems in place especially the Ghanaians here who can help you behind the scenes and those of you who are fortunate and then you are in the us right now you can contact some of those who here to do something like clinical experience with them so that they can give you letters of recommendations yeah Guys, any, any more questions? Let's ask any anything that you want clarification on. Hello. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. yeah thanks. Sorry. Um. Maybe I joined late. Uh, maybe what I'm asking would have been. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. Mm -hmm. uh, concerning um concentrating on passing the exam, does that mean um we shouldn't worry about the other uh you were talking about some documents from um our uh, dean the MDC and other things, those are not required to even register for the exam in the first place. Uh, okay. That's it. Yeah, so those are not required to register for the exam in the first place. Registering for the exam, the thing that you need, if only you completed school there and then you didn't have any criminal records there, there are things you just have to put in a request for it. It will be given to you. You just go there, they will give you a form, you just go and give it to them, you pay money, and then they will do it themselves for you. You don't need to, you don't need to worry about them. You don't need those things. I mean, so just for the exam, just concentrate on passing that if you pass the exam, I mean, and then you get to the application stage, there are tons and tons of people who are ready and willing to help you, including myself. Like if you pass the exam, don't worry, just concentrate on pass, passing the exam. Like when, when you pass the exam. There are lots of people here who will be willing to guide you, especially on the GPSF page. Right now, don't worry about those things. I mean, don't worry about it. Right now, just concentrate on passing the exam. Just register for the exam. Apply for the exam. When you pass, I mean, there are a lot of Ghanaians on GPSF page and then other people who are even not on the page who will be willing to help you. OK, all right. Thank you. All right, more questions, more questions, please. Henry, no break of the day. 
Bonsoir, à demain, friends. Hello? What day? Yeah, friends. Friends. Yeah. Please, question. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Um, I want to... Hello? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. Um, I want to clear the myth about getting surgical residency in the US. Uh, well, we hear that it's very difficult. It's not possible. How true is it? Okay. Okay. So, uh, I mean, uh, that's 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 a very good question. I forgot to talk about it. Uh, the truth is, is very difficult. I mean, it's very difficult. That is the truth. But it is not in. But it is not impossible. It is very difficult, but it is not impossible. I mean, because of that, a lot of people shun it. Most people don't usually want to do it because, I mean, people, I mean, it's very difficult, but it is very doable because I know a friend who matched in surgery this year. He's doing surgery here. But for him, his scores were very high. Step one, he had about two, five. He had two, five, seven in step one. And step two, he had, I think, around two, four, eight or two, fifty. And he also had... He also had a green card. Like, uh -huh, that's that's also an advantage. If you have a green card, it's very dis like it's very advantageous for you. But you don't need it too much. But if you have a green card, it's very advantageous for you because what happens is that the program sponsor your visa. So we have J one visa, H one B visa, and usually for the visas, if let's say you are given J one and you are married and you have kids, you are supposed to sponsor the visa for all of them. If only you can be able to prove that. That person is your wife. That person is your child. So, for example, me when I was coming, I was single. But if I were to have been married by the time I was coming and I applied for them, no matter the number of, if there are eight, they will give it to all of them. Because one of the seniors I came with, he had he came with his wife and three children. So because you know, because the program we need to do all, do all those things. I mean, they they prefer people with green cards, especially for those top programs. But if you don't have it, and then, and your scores are good, you, you can get it. It's not impossible, but it's relatively easier to match in internal medicine, PDX, and family me 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 medicine. And then even uh, pathology, but it is not impossible to match in surgery, even though it's difficult compared to these uh, specialties that I just talked about. And then before 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 another person ask another question, one thing I one thing I will let you guys one thing that I want to let you guys understand is that uh, the U.S. medical system can't do with international medical. Graduates. The truth is that of the practicing doctors in the U.S. right now, about thirty percent are international medical graduates. So it's like their system will collapse without us. So they need you more than. They need you more than you need them. That is the truth. If only you pass the exam, they need you more than you need them. If you go to the interview, you you find out that they are trying to convince you to rank them more than you think you need them. So all you need to do is just to pass the exam. They need you. Without you, they can't function, especially in their community-based hospitals. For example, the hospital that I'm, I'm, I'm in right now, about 90% of us are international medical graduates. So, so imagine if not for us, it means this year, the whole Bridgeport hospital wouldn't have gotten like rest residents. So all you need to do is just to pass the exam. They need you and then they regard us a lot. All you need to do is just to pass the, the exam. So surgery is difficult to get, but it's not impossible. Yeah. Guys, we have seven minutes for this 40 minutes. Thing, so please, let's ask all our questions so we don't come for a third round. Nobody, no, nobody's asking about the money and any other questions. <laughs> hey, hey. <laughs> money is uh, not I, 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 it's a very, it's a very, money and no, it's a very important motivation. Maybe <laughs> first thing first. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, it's a very important money and local. No, okay, you can talk about it. Okay, so I mean, uh, the money, the money. The money is good over here, to be honest with you, because like as a resident, averagely most programs will give you like uh, sixty thousand a year, so that will translate to about five thousand a month over here. Like instead of just be brisa, but I mean back at home, if imagine Ghana, like as a medical officer, who pay in blue, 
7,000. Now he's not even up to 1,000 dollars a month. That's about 800. So even if you're able to save 1,000, 2,000 here a month, I mean, that's a lot of money compared to Ghana. Even the specialists want to get that amount of money back, back home. And that, that is the average. Some programs pay like 70, 73,000 dollars like a year. And most of the time, fine, like tax will take about 25% away. I mean, but still you'll be able to, I mean, save some amount of money, take care of your people back at home. And after school too, depending on the specialty you do, for example, if you do, let's say, internal medicine, physics, you can be able to make about $250,000 a year. And then if you do fellowship, depending on the type of fellowship you do, you can be able to earn about three hundred to 500000 a year. I mean, if you pay uh, plastic surgery, cardiology, they are the ones who make, I mean, chow, amount of money is here. So, I mean, the money too can be, a, 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 I mean, good motivation for you. Just that for the first three years, the, the first the time you were in residence, you wouldn't be able to earn much. But still, you earn much more than you would have earned in, in Ghana, even though we were here. I mean, comparing the average amount of money people make, it wouldn't be that much. But compared to whom well, i mean it's, it's it's still substantial so i mean you can also use that as an abandon in terms of uh the motivation when you are because personally for me i mean my friends were doing locum they were making money i mean especially like during leave they were making locum they were earning additional amount of money even after work they were going to locum, they would make money people were buying cars and like and all that but if you look at the big picture and you look at the future you won't be perturbed i mean you know, you know that i mean if you're able to match and then you're able to come here you are going to make more than those people can make like i mean in about two or three years you can be able to come in like in about six months or in the middle of about like a year here so i mean that can be also an additional motivation I mean, yeah. of, you know, we had a question somewhere bro before you went Hello. Yeah. yeah. Oh, senior. Okay. Uh, my question is that uh, while in the program, do you have the opportunity to doing part time or local? If not, at what level of the program do you have the opportunity to do such? Okay. Good question. So we 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 call that moonlighting here. Yeah. It's called moonlighting. I mean, some programs allow, and some programs don't. Usually, the top programs don't usually allow it because the idea is that they will pay you well and then they want you to give all your time to study and then be a good resident or be a good physician so i mean some of the top programs won't and even the program that will allow you they will they will they will let you like you 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 have a duty to inform them that you are doing this job on the side and usually you can't do maximum i think three to six hours there are some states that can allow you to practice outside I mean, even while you are doing uh, residency. But then the, the thing about it is that over here in the US, medical lawsuits are a big deal. I mean, if you go and do, I mean, either negligence or more practice, you are sued. Sometimes you can really be sued in the millions of dollars. And the good thing about it is in residency, the hospital pays for your more practice in insurance. And just like house job, I mean, just like house job, house job back in Ghana, because you are being supervised, technically, you can't be sued directly if you are doing house job because you are not practicing dependent, like independently. You are you are supposed to be supervised by your boss. So even just as in Ghana, if you are doing house job and then you make a mistake and you are sued, technically nobody can see you because you are still under treatment. So it's your boss that will take the blame. Over here to the same thing. Just that here you have more price to ensure which is paid by the hospital. So if anything happens, the hospital is going to pay for that. But if you go and do moonlighting outside and then anything happens to you, you are on your own. That is the thing about it. And then over here, residency is very consuming, like very is very time consuming, it's very stressful. You there are times you can go to work like 6 a.m. or 5 a.m. and close around like 6 a.m., 6 p.m., 7 p.m. Even there are times you do 24 hours, and then the maximum free time you can get in the week is one day or let's say one and a half days so ideally you wouldn't even get the time to do it and even though the money you earn here in residence is not that much but to be honest with you it's enough to take care of your needs here it's enough to take care of your accommodation if you want to get the car it's enough for you 
I mean, it's enough for you to get almost all the things you want. So, I mean, that's it. some programs allow, some programs don't allow. Even the programs who allow you to do moonlighting, it's, it depends on your performance in the program. So let's say here, what they do very well is uh, assessment. Right, it will, it will end in one minute time. So please, I guess some of you had the last question. Oh, okay. So, so I mean, depending on your assessment, they can, they can tell you to stop. So it's a yes and a no answer to that. Guys, I think we can bring it to an end here. Um, friends will join our WhatsApp page. So if you have any other questions, just put it there so that um, you will answer the remaining questions there. Those who are not on that page, you can ask your friend to ask the question on your behalf. Right, guys? So I think we should bring our meeting to an end here. And thank you all for joining. Okay, thank you, friends, for coming. And uh, we'll keep in touch on the page. Okay, thank you, guys.